trust. Uh, for me, it's very, very important. Character is very important. Uh, when I'm dealing with anybody, I look at the character. Uh, when I form a team, I need maximum energy, maximum effort, and maximum help from them. And uh, you will not get energy, effort, and help if character doesn't come out. So my team members must exhibit a proven track record of being a truth teller, a covenant keeper, a person who seeks to be conformed to the image of Christ, someone who manages relationships well, and one who credits the efforts of others when victory is won. And, and, and I really want us to, to get to understand this. Uh, so I would, I would like to ask Frank Ochana uh, to, to just take us through what is on this slide. Just go through it carefully. There are only three slides. So our devotion is very short today. Ochana, are you there? Yes, Dectari, I'm there. Okay, go ahead. Okay, fine. It is, it is no accident that character is up first. When I form a team, I need maximum energy, maximum effort, and maximum help from, from them. My team members must exhibit a proven track record of being a truth teller, a covenant keeper, a person who seeks to be conformed to the image of Christ, someone who manages relationship well, and one who credits the effort of others when a victory is won. Yes, so we'll come back to this. Um, Faith Nzuki. Yes, Prof. Yeah, read us the next slide, which deals with competence. 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 My together? team. Yeah, am I starting from my team members? No. I've that is what I can see from my... Oh, yes, I have seen it. Mm. The second attribute is competence, skills, and expertise. I have no apologies for scouring the whole of DU for the best I can find. That and is then Desta I go. University. DU is Desta University. Okay. Mm. And then I go after that person with great determination. I've found that persistence is often the key here. I never apologize for looking for maximum competence in my team outfits, gifts and talents and capabilities that will take Desta University to the next level of effectiveness. Yeah, so the next, the second C is competence. The next slide uh, will be taken up by Caroline Dunge. Caroline Dunge. You can unmute Caroline. You are muted. Unmute Caroline. Let me and Caroline, you can unmute. You have raised up your hand. What, what are you saying? What can I read? Uh, 
Are we having a problem? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we, we, can, can, we can hear you. Someone yeah, else. So, uh, who did we ask to read? We asked Caroline, but we could not hear her. Can I read? Uh, I can so read. Carol, can somebody else pick it up? I can. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. The third C is on the chemistry screen. Initially, I doubted emphasizing fit when doing team formation. If I get negative vibes the first or two or three times, I am in someone else's presence. It's likely I'm not going to enjoy working with that person day in, day out. We at Deister University, we may be forced to clean up our royal messes and never knowingly violate the three C's again. Yes, um, that's very interesting, and I'm 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 state I'm being controversial. This is a chapter in this book I've written, and normally each book has just about um, not more than each chapter has not more than two three pages. Very short pages, but they're all on leadership attributes, which I want us to internalize. Um, uh, I would like, um, Cindy, are you there? Emma? Yes, yes, I am. Yeah, Paza Sauti? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I believe that if the right people are around the table, no, surely God no, will... No, 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 Cindy, there's a heading. Oh, sorry. Mm. The, get the right people around the table. I believe that if the right people are around the table, surely God will speak through them or through me or through our collective conversation and show us which direction to lead, to head. Get the right people around the table. I believe in this principle, like I believe in gravity. I really do think that every serious problem known to mankind is solvable and the right people are invited into the dialogue. When the right people? Cindy? Yes. Um, you have changed the meaning of that last sentence. Repeat it. <laughs> when the right people... Okay, uh, the sentence, the entire sentence. Okay. I believe in this principle, like I believe in gravity. I really do think that every serious problem known to mankind is solvable when the right people are invited into the dialogue. Yes. So this is this is our our devotion, getting the right people around the table. You know, Moses tried to scut around this one and said, uh, do we really need the right, we can pick anybody. But he later realized you can't do it unless you have the right people at the table. Um, so let us, let, us, let us discuss these three C's. And uh, let us start with character. Um, character is next to godliness. Character is next to godliness. And uh, it is about the truth. It's about who you are. Uh, so I would like some comments on this uh, first aspect of the three C's in uh, leadership. And this is a postgraduate class, so there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, just justify your, your reasoning. That's what is important. Lift up your hand so that we can see your hand. Raise your hand if you want to talk here. Yeah. 
Prof, you have said you have some hands raised. Okay, some hands raised. Let me pick them up. We'll start with Zibora Jepkemboy. Zibora, are you there? Yeah. Nyabera, Sam. Yes, yes, Prof. I'm, I'm here. Um, Go ahead, please. This this is a very interesting uh, devotion this evening. Uh, one reason is because I remember many years ago, uh, not really very many. They might be around uh, 10, 12 years ago. I read a mm -hmm. book that actually had this uh, chapter on how effective leadership is dependent on the three C's. And, and I know that uh, if I were to speak on character, character is what I would uh, equate to integrity. Integrity is such an important aspect of leadership that without it, nothing else matters. And, and even when I think about our, our constitution, uh, there is an entire chapter of the constitution that is dedicated to integrity. That means that this aspect of leadership is really important. And, and I agree with uh, your assertion that uh, character is next to godliness. Because when you, uh, you have good character, when you have integrity, then the other things can, can easily follow. And uh, I wanted to ask, would uh, would uh, mm. chemistry be called connection? Yeah, that will come to <laughs> what is chemistry, you know, and I'll be I'll be controversial there to ask other questions. Uh, but right. uh, I think I like your answer on character. Mm. Uh, can we have um, Wakesa come in? Uh, thank you, Prof. Um, on character, um, I, I really like the conversation. And from where I sit, character to me is basically the morals that defines you. I was actually going to, to share the same thing like uh, what someone said on integrity. And uh, integrity constitutes so many things. For example, honesty. Uh, truthfulness, as you've put it in your writing, the energy and the effort that comes with it. But again, uh, as, as we've, we've read, the element of collegiality comes in that uh, when someone has good characters, then this person will always encourage the essence of collegiality in a group. And therefore, where there is collegiality, then the collective conversation in the group and the direction in which the group takes will always be the positive direction aimed at achieving the best goals for the group. And so, uh, Prof, uh, character is, if, if you lack character, then the whole element of self uh, person uh, gets the the negative meaning of it all. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Joel Nyawita, then we move to the next slide. Joel, are you there? Joel Nyawita. How about, uh, can we have uh, Festus Le Paracuo give a comment? And remember, this is class participation, so it is recorded. So don't be surprised where your final grades are coming from. Think, uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, and uh, maybe just uh, to also give my view on character and uh, something on what you said that we need maximum energy 
maximum effort and uh, maximum help from uh, a team that you have formed. Inside that, uh, when you are having a team, you expect that everyone is going to cooperate uh, whenever they are called upon in any task that uh, that particular group is going uh, to do. So when uh, everybody in a team that you have formed is going to give us maybe uh, all the effort together, uh, if we are having uh, maybe a target, we are going to achieve it together. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I just want to add uh, the class that um, according to scripture, uh, Christian character includes the pursuit of truth, godliness, righteousness, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, kindness, um, patience, perseverance, meekness, humility, self-control, compassion, thankfulness, forgiveness, contentment, and a sense of togetherness. I think those of you who are, uh, are constant readers of the Bible know that I'm, I'm quoting this from uh, Galatians 5, uh, 22 to 23, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Character, you are actually demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, and, and so uh, it is so critical. And uh, character is who we are because of our relationship with Christ. And I believe it is something that can be built and learned as we follow him. And genuine Christian character is not just about our personality or our disposition. It is a description of, of who we are as Christians and what we are called to be in our entirety. So it is very, very important. As I told you, in writing this book, I have interspersed leadership traits with the Bible. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, anchoring in the Bible. Um, and you can see what character is here. And uh, I, I, don't, I, I, I hesitate to add, this is also true in the Quran. So not just the Bible. The Quran, in fact, overemphasizes character, uh, just like the Bible does. Uh, let's listen to your inputs on competence. Why would you look for competence if you are forming a team? Yes, Florence Macho. Uh, Florence Macho, I'm happy you noticed that character is actually the fruit of the spirit as a Christian. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, so, so we have uh, we'll, Joel Nyawita and Florence Macchio in that order. Or let's start with Florence, then Joel. Uh, thank you, Prof. Um, I don't think uh, one can succeed if your team is not competent. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if you're forming a team and then you end up doing the work, yet you have a team, then it pulls down, um, it pulls you down as a leader. And then even when we look at, um, mm -hmm. let's say a CEO, and um, a CEO is supposed to be upholding the vision of the company and where the company is going, almost like sitting on a hill and scutting the horizon to see what other possibility exists for the company. Uh, trusting that the team below the CEO is competent enough to carry the day-to-day -day duties of the office so that he's not bogged down or she's not bogged down with the nitty gritties uh, of the, the work itself. So competence, I believe, is a, is a very important thing to have within a team. Even in a house, in, in my house, if my house help is not competent to deliver on the things, uh, on, the, uh, on the work I've given her to do, then it pulls me down. I'll not be able to attend class. I'll not be able to go to work. And that means it will pull me down as well. 
Thanks. Agreed. Thank you very much. And um, the, the question I want to ask uh, you members of this class, we are looking for <clears throat> character. Uh, those attributes that I've talked about in uh, the fruit of the spirit. Why, why do you think that if you become a principal of a school or a manager of a bank or uh, the chief security officer or the veterinary officer or the agriculture officer, why do you then appoint people who are not competent? Uh, what does that tell about your character as a person? And what are the consequences if you are serving God? So uh, as I've seen many hands up, I want you to include that, those thoughts. Joel Nyawita, then Cindy Emma, then Zibora Jepkemboi. Yes. Are we there? Is there a time lag in this thing? Cindy, are you there? Yes, I am here. Yeah. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. So, yeah, so um, competence is uh, the slide explains. You're talking about um, the skills and expertise. And uh, so in my view, competence is very important in all spheres of our lives because um. Even when it comes to serving God, you should be able to do your best. That is to use the skills and the capabilities that God has given you to bring transformation in lives of people and in the church in general. And especially if you are in a leadership position in a church or even our organization, you should be able to demonstrate because it's through the leadership, remember, that uh, those who are under you will emulate what you are doing. So if you are not competent enough, if you are not able to, to deliver, your team members will follow the suit. And what does that mean? It means that the whole organization will fail simply because the person who is leading them is not competent enough to work effectively or deliver the results that are needed in the organization. Uh, so when it comes to the, I was looking at the relationship between the competence and the character, um, where if a person doesn't have integrity, for instance, if you don't have integrity, that will affect your willingness to be competent in whichever work that you are doing. Like, for example, we have um, I've seen this in a place where I have worked before, that is um, in a school setup, where you find that, um, yes, we have some leaders in different uh, departments, but the leaders will always tell you, this is what you are supposed to do. Make sure that you, you submit your, your schemes of work on time. Make sure that your lesson plans are and all that. But when it comes to them doing what they are supposed to do, you realize they are not doing what they are supposed to do. For, so for them, it's just to guide not demon demonstrate or lead by example. What happens at the end of the day, you realize that uh, those who are being guided and doing, they are trying their best to do what they are being told to do, but those who are leading to, are not, do not have the integrity, do not have, um, yes, a good character, quote unquote, to just uh, to demonstrate what they are asking those who are, they are leading to do. Yeah, so I feel like, uh, I think okay. being, um, as much as you might have, you might be educated, you might have the skills that are needed to work in a certain organization, but if your character is um, is wanting, it is very uh, it is difficult for you to deliver to the standards. Yes, so that is my contribution. Okay, very good. Um, uh, Zibora, and then Sanya. And let's be a little faster because of time.
sandals. First, we are supposed to know you will realize that those who follow Christ are that as the example will always do the right thing at the right time at the right place. Then on competence is that Yes. Oh my. We have a problem. Um, it's not your network. It should be the readers. Hmm? I think her network is not stable and it's like she's been kicked out. So maybe the next person. Can, can we have somebody, Sanya or Otieno, Juliet? I'm Sanya here. Yeah. Good evening, Prof. To you. Uh, I believe competence is uh, are born out of a training or a forum whereby we have skill impartation or some sort of expertise. And uh, it, it, all, it, it all has to do with capacity because if there is a task that needs to be, to be done, mm. you need a particular person who has the skills and that is the competence. Uh, the reason as to why uh, most of the seniors or some bosses or employees would rather go for people who are not competent could be one, they are not competent themselves and therefore they cannot even tell uh, a particular person is competent or a particular person can actually do or perform a particular task effectively. Mm. Or uh, there is this inferiority complex. A boss or someone who is, who is in charge will feel inferior and therefore will rather go for someone who is not competent. Or management, right. that is selfish, uh, that is uh, for easier management, in quote-unquote easier management. And I can quote very fast uh, or refer mm. to a case uh, at my workplace. I once worked with one of the uh, of my seniors and uh, who actua actually after coming and joining uh, this institution, he rather chose to get rid of all the employees and the uh, actually employees who are actually senior who are having a who are at a, a higher job group than himself, and instead opted to replace them with people who are actually lower. So in the same way, I will think that uh, he simply did that so as to make his work easier, quote unquote. Thank you, mm. Prof. Very good. Uh, uh, I can see Helen Gashanga is. Uh... Uh, giving us some interesting perspectives of what we are discussing. That's what we expect. Very good. Um, the next person uh, we had said. Okay, Juliet here. Juliet, yes, Juliet, then Paula Mata, then we move on. Yeah, good. Thank you so much, Prof. So maybe just to just mention one thing on character. There's a, a saying in Kiswahili that states, Tabia ni kama kikohozi. Akijifiti. Mm. So maybe when I just do a translation, direct one is like character is like a, I don't know, I use the term cough. When it mm. comes, you cannot prevent it. And mm. so just like cough, you said that a character is just the entirety of somebody. That is who you are. You may hide it, but a time will come that it cannot be hidden anymore. Mm. Uh, so when I look at competence, uh, competence is just a, uh, giving your best, showing the best of you and putting the effort that is needed so that the best can come out. And so mm. competence is built with time or it, it develops with time. And I think when you are trying to explain there, you've mentioned something like persistence that I found that persistence is often the key here. So it mm. means that uh, as you continue to persist in uh, giving the best and uh, and trying to give yourself out on whatever you are doing, then mm. your competence is built. And so a time will come that 
it will become part of you and it cannot be hidden wherever you find yourself even when you find yourself where people are, are incompetent because it is part of you you are just going to do what is there sometimes mm. you may be looked at like you are you are like you live in your own world like uh, sometimes you can comments can be made like uh, you overwork others will tell you that utachoka tu hata sisi tulianzia hapo na siku hizi tuko hapa but if it is out of you you just give the best and it just becomes part of your life until maybe one day it shall pay off thank you okay. thank you very much finally pola mata then we go on paul uh, yes please go ahead yeah to you uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, my colleague there has uh, really talked about what I wanted to talk about mm-hmm. today, but uh, I'll just add something small uh, that uh, uh, competence uh, and uh, character, we combine both of them to some extent, but I'll say that uh, persistence and self-development in terms of training will actually make someone competitive. And then in terms of work, uh, skills, talents are very important. And then uh, passion, being passionate about what you are doing will uh, help you uh, actually meet your targets and uh, come out uh, the best or do whatever you want to do in the best way possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I want you to note this. I'm introducing these aspects because this course is about leadership and uh, policy studies. And uh, you are going to be in positions of leadership. There are policies to guide you on how to run that institution. But uh, if you don't focus on your own character and the character of your team, if you don't focus on the competency, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many policies are in place. They will not uh, bear fruit. Um, the chemistry. Um, uh, I would like some comments here. And, and, and I have been very provocative about chemistry in my trainings in schools about leadership and other places. Uh, I was with the VCs, the newly appointed VCs, and I was telling them, for me, uh, chemistry will determine my team. Monica Wakoli, Eugene Situma, let's go. Good evening, Prof. Good evening. Okay, my understanding of chemistry, <clears throat> especially in an organizational setup, is the bond or the connection among the workers which will enable them to be team players in order to achieve the goals of the organization by working together. That's mm. all. Yes, very good. Chemistry. But some people will argue, what comes first, chemistry or character? Uh, and I've seen it already on this platform. Uh, Eugene and then Joel Nyawita. Good evening, Prof and colleagues. Yeah. To yeah, you. thank you, Prof. This one is, uh, I think, uh, very sensitive, and uh, I appreciate the bit of uh, chemistry fit in terms of uh, if it's the cultural fit or the connection with one. And uh, I I wanted to find out, uh, sometimes when you're building a team, it's different because you're able to do it. How do you deal with it when you inherit a team? Mm. And then uh, where do you draw the line? Because sometimes I... It said that if you are truly a great leader, you should be able to work with anyone. Mm. And uh, sometimes I think uh, the chemistry bit can be abused where somebody decides to let other people go, saying there is no chemistry. So I think Mm. for me this is uh, sensitive and a bit controversial uh, because of those aspects. I don't know what your take is. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, let me hear from, I'll have my take at the end. Let me hear from Joel and then Cindy and Sanya, and then we close. But uh, I want to say this. Uh, when you get into an organization, 
you don't just you don't smell people and say they don't smell good so they must go you you engage in cultural uh revival you you establish a different culture and usually people who don't align to your chemistry uh they they'll find it very hard to to engage in um, accepting a new mindset, a new culture. So when I talk about chemistry, uh, I'm looking for a fit. I'm looking for a strategic fit. And uh, I can give opportunity. Uh, let's say it is punctuality. I'll be talking about punctuality and being punctual myself. Uh, commitment, uh, ETC, all those aspects. Uh, but soon you'll find that uh, uh, these people don't fall in sync. They are not in, not that they are incompetent, no. But they are they are just not in in sync with you. Yeah. But let's let's hear the others. Yeah. Hello, Prof. Good evening. Yeah. Is that Joel? Uh, yes, this is Joel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, the first time I raised my hand, my computer froze, so I couldn't even talk. Okay. But uh, I'll comment on the C's. Um, I'm, I'm a coach, and I coach uh, people at uh, the institution where I work. Mm. And I look at these three things. One, if the person can play the game. Mm. And character. Okay. Is with but when try to mute the myself, uh -huh. I'm still struggling. Uh, yeah, he's really poor network. Don't work together with. And if you get caught, yeah, I think there's a problem, Carol. Yeah, today I think Safari com, those are using Safari com, I'm really getting in trouble dropping in or not getting, but we hope they will stabilize. Could we have the next speaker come in? Uh, Cindy or Stella Sanya, Regina Waito, Florence Machio, in that order. Could you have some comments quickly? Yeah, this is Stella. Yeah. Uh, for me, chemistry is uh, what you've said, clicking, being in sync, and just flowing. And I believe chemistry can be built at different levels. Sometimes the initial chemistry can blind you. So it's also good to just uh, interact further with people before you decide. And there's once um, I was given someone to work with and they were really hard to work with. And I complained a lot. But then my boss told me, sometimes you just have to work with what you have. So I decided to use a different tactic and we started flowing. So... It's not always the, the initial clicking that always lasts. And um, I have a question. Do you uh, allow some flexibility when you're hiring in that you may not have the three Cs at one point, but you allow because at least you've seen character and you're willing to handhold the people to grow their competence and the chemistry? Mm. I think... I think uh... Growing competence is one of my responsibilities. I don't expect packaged people. You know, do you know why Manchester City is not a team that is in the hearts of people? Because they, they buy the best. Uh, what do you expect? But teams like Arsenal, like Liverpool, they nurture. They nurture people and they become so you you can have that but but i'm emphasizing the fit uh, if you look at my sentence there if i get negative vibes the first or two or three times 
I'm in someone's presence. You know, like somebody's in the bus coming from Earth River and going to Nairobi and is busy saying, why is the vice chancellor calling us for a meeting at 6.30? I'll, I'll hear those vibes. They come through. Somehow God brings them. Eh? And then you give the person a chance. You call another meeting, you see he's silent. He or she is silent in a meeting throughout. He thinks that it, it, you like... You, you are a narcissist. I mean, you are, you are somebody who is uh, wicked and you want people to be in the in the office at 6 that, But they don't know that that is just one meeting of the Senate that has come out of an emergency because the preparations for the graduation are not going well. So you get to pick them in many, many ways. Uh, always coming late. Even you've been in a place for a year. I'm not talking the first week you enter somewhere, but after a week, you find somebody. After a year, they are still coming late for meetings. They are still creating excuses not to attend meetings, uh, etc. So this chemistry thing, I want you to open up your minds. Uh, it is something you are looking for a fit, and then you find that this guy, this person, he or she, will never become part of your fit. Yeah. Next. Yeah, so Cindy here. Yeah, is that um, Cindy or Regina? Yes, it's Cindy. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so according to me, um, chemistry comes with uh, the attitude. And um, the attitude that you bring in, for example, in an organization will affect the, the outcome. And uh, as you have said, you're talking about negative vibes. Remember in leadership and um, in our, our workplaces, if you, are, you want to go far, like you have set your goals, you have the objectives. I think, I mean, um, a person who is not in for helping the organization achieve their goals or be part of the team that is making the organization succeed. It is very difficult to work with a person, with such a person, because it's like you're moving, we are not moving towards the same direction. So the attitude that the person try to portray will affect mm. the outcome. It affects the, the effectiveness of the organization and how it will run. It will affect even sometimes you realize that uh, when you are having like just a simple uh, group discussion, and then if someone is not even willing to participate, you realize that it will take it will take you longer than you had you had planned. A person who just is doing it doesn't want to be part of what you are doing. It will affect the outcome of uh, what you are you what you are doing. So and but then I had a question, uh, Prof, um, mm -hmm. because here we are talking about. Uh, we are talking about chemistry, competence, and character. Mm. What are you supposed to do, for example, if you find yourself, for instance, in a Muslim community where you have to, to work, mm. where you have to lead, and where you have to, to also make sure that you, you help people when it comes to integrity. So um Considering that uh, these are Muslim community with a different religion and all that, their beliefs are different. How do you bring in your character? Because as a Christian, you're, you draw your, your character from Christ. So how do you manage such situation? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we'll, we'll get to that. Um, uh, finally, I, I, I want us to get the right people at the table. Get the right people at the table. Um, I want I want some comments, and I want intelligent comments. Not that people are not giving intelligent comments. I'm just provo being provocative. What do I mean by getting the right people at the table? What what am I talking about? <coughs> Prof, can I begin? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I'll be brief. Getting the right people uh, at the table, to me, it simply means getting those people who 
who have the same shared vision as yours. As a leader, for me to achieve what I want to achieve, for me to achieve the goals that I've set for the organization, then I need people who are willing and ready to support. Have the, otherwise, if I propose to have something done, which I believe can bring the organization to the next stage. And majority of those people that I'm having at the table <clears throat> are not supporting it. Then it probably means that we will not be able to achieve it. So having the same people who have the same shared vision, understanding, mm -hmm. and the attitude to take the next, uh, to take the organization to the next level is what I believe is having the right Okay, okay. You're also struggling with the internet. Oh my God, this is terrible. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, the next participant who wants to put in? Yes. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Paul. Uh, my thinking is um, having the right people around the table uh, is you're thinking about people who share the vision that you have. Uh, they share the same kind of attitude that you're putting into that vision. And they're ready mm -hmm. to run with you in that vision, mm -hmm. willing to take whatever sacrifices they have to make. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there are people who are working in integrity, uh, people who are competent for the task that is ahead. Mm. people who are teachable mm. so that as you progress with the vision um nobody is perfect so we are bound to make or they may be they're bound to make mistakes in the in the process mm. but they are willing to learn and be corrected and move on with the vision not people who will despair because you have said oh no this one did not go this way we want it this way but people who are willing and ready to learn, accept their mistakes, and pick up and move on with the vision. Thank okay. you. Yeah, I, I, and I agree with everybody. Uh, because of time, I just want to go back here. Uh, I forgot to, to emphasize. Look at that second bullet. Uh, and I would like somebody to decipher that bullet and tell me what am I talking about here? decipher that bullet sorry uh decipher that bullet and tell me what am i talking about here can i give an attempt prof go ahead yeah yeah, um, I, I hope I'm reading the right uh, bullet. We at uh, Daystar University, yeah, yeah. we may be forced to clean up our royal messes and never knowingly violate the three C's again. Uh, this appears to, to be a message directed at uh, the Daystar establishment. Mm. Um, as a leader, you may have come in and realized that uh, there have been messes in the past mm. where possibly people in leadership positions have uh, uh, deliberately violated character, competence, and, and chemistry. Or maybe they have never bothered to think about how important those uh, three Cs are. And mm -hmm. so you are urging them mm -hmm. that uh, there is no choice other than uh, clean up the mess, uh, as in you are thinking some people will have to be removed from their positions because they are an impediment to effective leadership and uh, taking the Easter University where it's supposed to be taken. And mm. so this is, a, I think, uh, an assertion that um, uh, there are not going to be any stones unturned mm. uh, if the Easter is going to achieve the, the, the vision it has set. Okay. Why do I use Why? royal? Why do I use royal messes? Uh, uh, it, it could be yes. referring to, uh, you see, like uh, the royal family, those hereditary positions where mm. people become leaders because they are fans of so-and-so or they are friends of so-and-so. Uh, and 
in, in such cases, you don't find any consideration for the three Cs. It's about mm. who you are, who you know, and uh, how you look, how you smell. That's how you get into leadership positions. Mm. Uh, Prof. Prof, can I attempt on oh, the royal races? Please, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, and please so say your name. My screen is, is very poor tonight. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is Florence Machio. Okay, um, Machio. I, mm. I want to attend on the royal messes. Uh, mm. When you look at the royal family, it's it's about entitlement. It's about, and not in a bad way, that this is something given to you. You didn't even work very hard for it. And mm. so royalty depicts that I am born as uh, I'm born in this home and therefore I will inherit. So it's mm. automatic. What that does is that then the person doesn't do so much apart from the usual, uh, we wake up, we sleep, we do whatever needs to be done and that's it. So they don't go over and above. The example you're giving, a meeting is called at 6.30. I'm wondering why should I go? I mean, we've done this thing before and I see that a lot uh, in, in, in government where I work, where mm. it's about... There's no way you will fire a civil servant. I mean, we've been here before and therefore. And so for me, cleaning up the royal messes is going back and doing the hard stuff and saying, you know what? Mm. The vision that we carry for this institution going forward needs people who have these three Cs, but it also needs people who have the heart to take it where it needs to go. Hence, mm. you know, as Jesus had his 12 disciples, at some mm. point, some had to fall off like Judas uh, mm. because... In terms of propagating the gospel beyond, uh, you know, Christ dying, we needed people like Peter who are ready to cut somebody's ear. <laughs> anyway, that's my yeah. submission. Okay, okay. Thank you very Prof. much. And, and just oh, sorry, who is that? This is Osanya. Yeah, Sanya. Let's let's okay. Wrap it up. We want Prof. to move. I'm looking at a mess. A mess that is royal. Mm. You know. Hi. My... Let's listen to the person on the stage, then you can come in. Yeah. I'm go ahead. At... This yeah. is Sanya. Yeah, Sanya, go I'm ahead. Looking at... I'm looking at a mess that is royal. There are some things we do unconsciously. We think they are right. Until we own them and we even talk well about them. But a leader comes in to us, what we're doing is right. But now uh, the right leader comes in. What we believe in now, it must be undone. That's what, well, that's what I can say about the royal mess. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, very Prof. good. Uh, any other comment? Somebody wanted, somebody was very anxious. Prof, was allow that? me try. Z Your Zipora. name? Is that Zipora? Yes. Are you back? Yeah, good. Zipora. Yeah, go ahead. Zipora. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying that to me, my understanding about our royal messes is the what what we as leaders have or the wrongs of our, our wrongs as leaders we are supposed to correct them. For instance, let's say for example we have failed as leadership, we should be ready to correct our ways and never to violate the three. Zipora, you are right. You must have the courage to correct them. Hello. Uh, yeah, those, uh, those. But, but, uh, colleagues, I I want you to note that this is a course in leadership. Uh, in various sectors, but if you go to schools today, uh, there are a lot of royal messes, and royal messes include ethnic appointments uh, by the teacher service commission. Uh, even when people are not qualified, they are appointed. Now, what does that mean? That means you are disadvantaging that Kenyan child who would have become a lawyer, a doctor, under the right leadership. Uh, uh, so these royal messes have really issues, and I would like you to reflect on them as we run away from our our devotion this mo this uh, evening
what I would like to do is uh, to show you something interesting here, something called a mind map. Um, mind map. Uh, and uh, I, I would like to talk about it briefly uh, because that is um, what gives the difference in the the top learners in this world. The top learners in this world, that's what gives the difference. And um, I think uh, I would like this class to note this. Um, I don't know whether this is being seen properly. I want you to take a moment and just reflect on this. Reflect on this because in policy analysis and writing policy papers, we will require you to, to work on mind maps. But just look at that. For, I want to give you five minutes to look at it. Uh, is everybody there? Yes. 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 Yeah. So just just continue looking at that. Um, and this is called a mind map. So if you are looking at a concept um, and you, you want to internalize the workings of that concept, you bring out the main variables and you try to see the relationships between those variables. I didn't want to use the ones on policy because it will make it easier, but I'll be doing that in a short while. Um, I want you to get used to developing mind maps. Um, if you take matter, which is in the middle, matter can be liquid, matter can be liquid, can be solid, can be gases. It can also be plasma or condensates in chemistry. This is a lot of chemistry because of my background. But I just want you to note that if you want to decipher concepts clearly, 
you have to put them in what are called mind maps. So for example, when I look at matter, I've already known matter can either be liquid, gas, solid, condensates, or plasma. How about liquids? What are liquids? They are less dense than solids. They take the shape of the container. Examples are milk and water, and they are difficult to compress. How do I move from a liquid to a gas? There is evaporation, add heat. How do I move from a gas to a liquid? Condensation, cool down. How do I move from a liquid to a solid? I freeze. How do I move from a solid to a liquid? I melt, add heat. And what are examples of solids? Ice and wood. Solids are very hard to compress. They hold down shape, have high density. And so if you're doing chemistry, which we are not doing here, the molecules are closely packed. For the liquids, molecules slide past each other. For the gases, molecules are spread out. Intuitively, you can see that. What if you change a solid into a gas? What if you change a solid into a gas? That is called sublimation. This process is sublimation. Solid to liquid, melt or melting. Liquid to gas, evaporation. Notice this. The idea I'm trying to bring out is this. When you are revising policy or even research methods, it is very important to, to, for you to begin to engage with mind maps so that you are not reading notes. Huh? You are not reading notes. Let me see if my pictures will come. You are not reading notes uh, from this chapter to this chapter uh, and, and, and then you are sitting down and you are trying to memorize what is a variable, which one is the independent, which is the dependent, and so on. The beauty of mind maps is that they, once you, the, 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 the pictures sit in your subconscious. And so when you want to recall, when you want to recall uh, in an exam or when you are writing, it is so easy. You don't even have to memorize about the liquid, the solid. Because you have seen it pictured here, you will quickly see that a solid has these attributes. A liquid has these attributes. And then now you can join them with your own sentences. And uh, you get to be the A student in that area. Many people kept on asking me, how did you manage to to keep Kenya high for the last six years, up to two years ago when I couldn't do it because of the work, in position one in the country. The trick was mind maps. Mind maps. And a lot of things that I learned, like now what we have just done on, on, character, on a character, chemistry, and uh, competence, I can just do a mind map of that. What are the attributes surrounding Character. What are the attributes surrounding chemistry? What are the attributes surrounding competence? And how do they relate to each other? Finished. I've read that chapter. And when I go somewhere, they just come back. And then I'm able to, to add my own reasoning. So can I, can I get some encouragement that people are seeing where I'm going? But I know some of you have already encountered mind maps. Yes. Jen, isn't Jenny Amisi? Yes, please. Yes, thank you, Prof. Um, I can actually attest to the usefulness of mind mapping. 
Um, reason being, I actually consulted you on the same mm. because I had shared with somebody who who is teaching chemistry in Kenya High, and mm. uh, and you actually gave me a brief idea of how mind mapping works. Eh? Mm. And uh, when I did to put it to practice, because I'm also a chemistry teacher mm. uh, in Upper Hill, mm. it actually demystified chemistry to quite a number of students. Mm. Mm. Because we were, we were able to, to relate concepts just like you've done here. You've uh, looked at matter and all the ways in which our matter can, can exist. Mm. Um, if I still go back to chemistry, we did a very good mind mapping when we were looking at organic chemistry and yeah. mind mm. mapping actually mm. is is so practical and uh, mm. it does simplify things that may look complicated because chemistry can look ambiguous to some learners. But uh, mm. with use of a mind map, it actually opens up what the concepts you're talking about are all about. And this is not only mm. applicable to chemistry, any other area. Uh, I've talked about it in chemistry. I also see it working in maths. And I think in many other concepts, uh, mind mapping opens up our thinking. Yes, mm. that's the question. Yeah, and I want, I want to encourage uh, Meshak Sindani before I go. Please go ahead. Hello, good evening, Prof and my colleagues. Um, mm. I think the idea of mind maps, I, I was privileged, uh, I think two years ago, I was in one of your mentorship programs in Moifos' Academy, and mind maps came in handy mm. for us. Yes, so, and uh, being a teacher of Swahili and music, they actually were able to work for me to date, and I have never abandoned the concept. I keep building on it because I, it, it, the students took, took them very, very positively because they reduce the duration we would take in terms of preparation for the final examinations and all, mm. because mm. they worked mm. in groups. For example, when I'm teaching African music, they would do it so nicely better than I thought myself because mm. the interpretation of the learners can be better than even the interpretation of the teacher, especially when you bring them together and uh, just jumpstart them into mind maps. And it is the best thing I use to date. And even as you uh, you talked of uh, in research methods, we can actually use the same because there are so many, there's so much terminology that we have to put up with. And mind mapping is going to summarize everything mm. and you're going to move very, very well. And I appreciate so much for this idea that you brought to us. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Prof, Thank I wanted to much. just uh, add something quickly, oh. if you don't mind. Yeah. This yes. is, um, I just uh, wanted to that? say that uh, uh, when you use a mind, a mind map, Sam, Sam Nyabere. Okay, Sam. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Go yeah. Ahead. I, I just wanted to add quickly that... Uh, Mind map is a is a is a is a very effective way of uh, even teaching critical thinking. Uh, yeah. From a teacher's perspective, when I'm teaching my students uh, essay writing, for example, and I want them to be able to develop ideas so that when they write them, they, they can they can focus, they can remain focused on the topic area. We use mind mapping as a strategy to help them think systematically. So I think even in leadership, whenever mm. one is uh, confronted with a challenge, uh, coming up with a mind map mm. will mm. ease the way of getting solutions to a problem. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Uh, I want to leave it there. We are going to, what I'm trying to encourage you people is uh, policy analysis will become very complicated. Uh, if you try to memorize all these things that we are learning, so it is important to sit when you're sitting in groups to do a mind map joining the related ideas. For example, let me just give you an example. Uh, when we, last week, we started 
uh, looking at the eightfold path. Step one, define the problem. So you could put it in, in this place of liquids, you can put define the problem. Step two, assemble some evidence. Step three, construct alternatives. Step four, select criteria. Step five, project the outcomes. Step six, confront the trade-offs. Step seven, stop, focus, narrow, deepen. And step eight, tell the story. And what will this be in the center? The eightfold path. And then we will start putting notes here around these things and seeing how they are interrelated. I want us to be logical, enhance our logical thinking. Uh, and, and that's where I'm actually going with you. Uh, as we go into policy analysis, I, I, I went through it and I don't want to get into details. I can bring you all the mind maps, Moi Forces did, Kenya High, uh, Capsabet, all those schools uh, in various subjects, in maths, in uh, FASI, in literature, in chemistry. And that's how they get those A's. They don't get those A's by sitting in class and trying to memorize. They sit in class doing mind maps and in groups on weekends. Uh, so I would like us to adapt that uh, here. Now, um, I want us to move very quickly. Uh, by the way, the, the bread, uh, some of you are wondering what is that bread? And some of you maybe are wishing you are. That, that bread is Amoni demonstrating the mixed methods research. You have eggs, you have sugar, you have uh, raisins, you mix them up and eventually you get bread. Uh, that's that's the purpose of that slide. So it's 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 just good for you to note that. Um, I want us to go to the work I gave you. Uh, assignment one number one: defining the problem in policy analysis. And I want to hear your experiences uh, in doing that assignment. And then we'll look at the first case study defining the problem from a policy analysis report. Uh, so, Caro, I, I, I don't know whether you can, are we able to go into groups? Yes, uh, Prof, I can, I can uh, get the groups. I'll, I'll form the groups. They're usually about, they're usually nine, 10. So everybody mm -hmm. will go in the groups they're usually in. They will, they will join, if you're usually in group one, you go in group one, two so that they go because of the discussions that are following your question. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I would like them to go into their groups and uh, I, I'll be interested to know what was their experience in looking at uh, the first path defining the problem. Uh, that was a the, group of threes then, Prof. It wasn't the group for tens. The so group of ten group was for the... Research. The research, okay. The groups of three. Okay, for the group of three, I'll do the same. Hmm. Just go to your group that you are in. So, Prof, do you want to be going in each group, work in each yeah. group, or you want them to present in class? You'll, you'll be going in each group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, but students, we, I'll, we I'll would, put back... What, we, just a minute, Carol, what would be the quickest way? Because I wanted just to have an idea of what's going on in the groups before I give them the next step two. I must make sure that they're getting step one right. What if the group members, uh, well, each mem one member from the group whom they had picked up presents uh, the, the, their views about different group uh, discussions? OK, you are muted. Okay. Get ready then. Let them get ready. Okay. All Faith, right. I think Faith has a has a, a hand is up. Yes. Faith. I was wondering, I was not in the other class and I've got no group where I'm going to be fixed. If I will be fixed now or what will happen. Okay. Yeah, Faith is the one of the latest 
newcomers who came after the groups have been formed. But I think now, since everybody's going to present in class, Faith, you should be able to get in and understand. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so Carol, get us into groups. Let every group have their leader to present. Yeah. Yeah, so I think members, you students, you have your groups, isn't it? Um, I will be just calling in one of you that each group you can begin off. The group of th threes, uh, let me uh, try to get you to see your group. You even know each other so that you can start presenting. Any question? Does any group wants to start as I show off your groups, just in case you've forgotten your group? You sure, make sure you introduce your group members because we are recording live for purpose of uh, um, for purpose of uh, uh, grading. You have to say your group members so that we can be able to know who they were, so that they can also have a grade. Other than Faith who came in late, okay. so uh, Florence Macho, can your group begin okay. us off? Dr. Carroll, I was actually requesting that you show us the groups. We're in so many groups, sometimes you even forget which one is working for the day. So kindly, if you don't mind, just project that. It will be easy to remember the names for that particular group. Okay, so what we are asking group members, um, this is what we'll go to do. The three of you will show, showcase you, so you'll try to have your video on if possible so that we can see the three of you, and uh, then one of you will be presenting. So give me a minute so that I can be able to showcase the group. Meanwhile, you can be planning among yourselves. Are you stranded? I'm not stranded. I am. Um taking them just to show them the groups, uh, just so that they can also have one minute of reorganizing themselves. I'll show you your group just in case you've forgotten. So we have group A to which group? Um, let me just get the whole group thing so that I can go back to it. So we can begin with group A. Group A, we have Jen. We have uh, group A, we have Jen. We have Evans Asila. And we have uh, Ruth Ingosi. Uh, so I hope you have picked that. That what you, what you want to know? So you can take note of your group A. Group A, you have. Even if you're twin, when someone else is not in, please go ahead and just present the two of you. Uh, so we have group A, we have Jen, Evans, and Ruth. Yeah, and then group uh, B. You can filter groups up there so that it brings together. Oh, yeah, that's another option. 
Let me just remove something is barring me from here. Let me just apply filters. Uh, sorry. Okay. Okay, let me just go ahead with this group B. Frank, Frank, you be ready for group B. Leah. Frank, Leah. And someone else here. Frank and Leah. I have to know who is this in group B. So you can start off. You are already here. You know yourselves. Up there, there. You're saying here? March. March, then next select. So um you go to page one, could be on page one. Yeah, you know now we can have uh Florence, your group can start us off as we have everybody else um go in. It will it will still just mash as it is. Let me so meanwhile, let's have Florence and Ruth as you begin. I'll be typing your group there as you move on. So can we have Florence and uh, and um, Ochana's group begin? I'll be typing your groups there. Allow us to caucus. Sick. Yeah. Okay, Frank, uh, your group. Excuse me, Dr. Ayuya. Yes. Yeah, I think I'm a bit confused because when you're talking about the groups of uh, threes, eh? I think this one was one we did with 613, an assignment we did with 613 sometimes back. Because mm -hmm. the, the 623, Dr. Ayuya, we are members of 55. Five. I stand to be corrected. Of no, 623. 613, 613, you are more. 623, you are less. No, Excuse me, Dr. Ayuya. Yeah. For uh, this class, this is the unit that we did last Sunday. Yes. The one that was pushed from Saturday because of the graduation dinner to Sunday. And the assignment... Actually, the, the, the assignment that you are talking about for the groups of threes, it was for research method. This, I'm on your uh, class, and uh, you remember the you remember the group that uh, Dr. Martin Munyao recreated. You remember that group? Kind yeah. Of... Yes. Carol. Yes. I... Yes. I remember the group I was in. I was with Madiang, Cindy, Nyawita, and someone else. I've never met someone, Jane and Evans. Okay, okay. Well, um, Prof, you can guide. I think the students are just getting confused. You see, I'm on 623. I am not on any other class. That's why my yes. body is reading 623. 613 is a very different class. And in 623, I can take you back to your assignment that you're supposed to do in your group. This was assignment. Let me share. Uh, I think you, you just... Um, this is your portal for 623. Um, so... Um, let me just go back to six three three assignment one, which was supposed to be under pink week one. 
and reduction for analysis course, uh, mapping goals. So why are you saying you, you guys don't know about this assignment? It was an individual assignment. It was individual. Dr. Yuya, mm -hmm. can I talk? Yes, go ahead. Uh, these assignments were supposed to be individual assignments. The group work that were given were on research methods. The mapping and then the three the the three turns that is to, to turn one, turn two, and turn three. Those are those were individual assignments. All right, uh, Prof, you want to guide? I think the students are right. Yeah, if it is turn one, turn two, or even have it here, turn three, those are individual assignments. What I'm surprised, you don't have a, a group assignment in policy analysis? Yeah, we don't, we are not no. here. Not yet, Prof. Not yet, Prof. Okay. Okay. Okay, Excuse then. Me, bro. Uh, Excuse me, bro. No, no, that's fine. That's okay. Uh, there's okay. nothing uh, criminal there, but... Uh, I would like uh, us, therefore, to look at the assignment on uh, defining the problem. Was That was an individual assignment? Uh, yes. yes, yes, Prof. The... Yes, yeah, uh, individual there. assignment. And I hope it is uploaded already. Yes, they have uploaded. Yes, yeah. they have uploaded. So can I have... Before before uh, before moving on on to step two, assemble some evidence. I would like to have some class reactions to this uh, path number one problem identification. What did you encounter? I think let's go that way. What did we encounter? And and uh, let's just have uh, some feedback before we look at. Um, the illustration, box one, two, on defining the problem. So I think, uh, class, I think Prof has asked you to react on this assignment, this particular assignment one. Uh, you are doing program selection policy make research the research the, research the chosen problem identify and map out the goals and objectives so he's asking you to react in your writing up uh react on that that particular uh assignment in other words how did we feel about the assignment i think that's what i want to know before we go to number 2 Can I, can I speak for myself quickly? Yeah, just yeah, go ahead. People can lift up their hands, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened, uh, I, being away from, uh, from, from the country, I was heavily relying on uh, uh, internet and uh, online. Uh, so I picked uh, uh, this, this program called the Kenya Vision 2030. Mm. And uh, uh, as I was trying to look at the objectives and uh, and the goals of the project and trying to read around it, I was not able to find uh, what I can consider enough information about the objectives and the goals and trying to align them with uh, the leadership and the policy. So I more or less just analyzed the, the, the objectives of that pro project uh, and, and I feel that uh, my response might not have been as deep as it should have been. And, and I think it's because of, uh, uh, well, maybe lack of enough material around the Vision 2030. Okay. Uh, we have uh, uh, Machio. Can I hear your initial impressions of the assignment? Yes, Prof. Uh, so I, I chose to look at the the president's women's charter, he he put together a charter, committed himself on uh, certain aspects of women's rights. Yeah. Within it, there was 
a conversation about unpaid care work or care work and its contribution to to the GDP. And then um, I, I stumbled on the fact that there is a care work policy going on and it's about to be finished at the end of the year. And so I was just analyzing uh, based on the recent time use survey that KNBS, uh, Kenya National Bureau for, of Statistics released, the time mm. use survey which talks about unpaid care work and the and the, the costing of it and how women spend their time and how we can value that into GDP to try and do an analysis of, of the commitment of uh, the president recognizing care work, but also the work that it entails to have a proper policy that A, speaks into the data, but also speaks into what he was hoping to achieve. And I mm. uh, also happened to talk to a few people within Treasury to tell me what will it take for us to compute a figure that let's say talks about the grandmother who's taking care of a small child, who a teenager needs to, who got pregnant needs to go to school. So there's a, there's a, a grandma who is doing the care work for this child because there are no systems for it. How would we quantify that as a figure? So I left mm. with more questions than a conclusion, but that's mm. what I ended up doing. Very good. Uh, I like the diversity of thought, and then we shall assemble it together. Uh, any other impression? This is a master's class, and all these, we must be able to bring them on board. Uh, so, yes, who is that? I'm, I'm Justine. Yeah, you, you are a little low, your voice. I'm Justine. Yes. Okay, I think the question, uh, as people are giving their feedback, Mm. Uh, I think the question was uh, on uh, five uh, essential uh, uh, points we were to map a program against the impact on uh, preservation on human dignity, mm. the impact on equity, mm. on effic efficiency, then the fiscal uh, state of the country, and the impact on uh, political visibility. Uh, Is it, it correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. If that is correct, then um, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Okay. To me, I looked at uh, the policy on uh, information and communication technology. Yes, you want to move near your mic or something to, so that we can hear your, your voice? Are you getting me? Yes, I can hear you. At least I can hear you, yeah. <laughs> okay, my policy or uh, my area was uh, information and communication technology in education and training. Yes. So. I tried to map out this on the five goals. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I tried to look at what gave out as human dignity in the policy. So, for example, I looked at the ability of individuals to access the use of polit politics in advance to advance their value preferences and improve their quality. So I based that on human dignity. I tried to look at areas that talked about human dignity in this policy, mm. then uh, areas that talked about equity on that policy. Mm. And uh, maybe I can just give a, a brief uh, thing about uh, something about equity. So this policy, the ICT policy, it uh, recognizes that uh, we do not all start from the same place 
and we must acknowledge and make adjustments to imbalances. So it seeks to address an equal, an equal uh, access to ICT materials and opportunities yes. to, to the economy and give security to the economy. So uh, maybe if I can talk about, okay, there are several points. Maybe I'm just giving a- Just um, summarize. Yes, yeah. Summary. Mm. On efficiency, um, mm. I looked at uh, how the, the policy was efficient. So mm. the ICT policy, Mm. It has uh, a great impact on efficiency in that uh, that uh, it is aimed at expanding learning opportunities and uh, training by providing the essential uh, materials required. Mm. Then uh, there is a uh, there's uh, a research that was done by CESA, that is a Continental Education Strategy for Africa, mm. that emphasizes on the use of ICT and uh, as an important tool in achievement of quality education. Then uh, we have the competence-based curriculum. It also emphasizes on developmental skills and knowledge and application of uh, the ICT or uh, putting or um, incorporation of ICT in uh, CBC. KICD also did uh, uh, some research and it has an act, there's an act that provides for development of evaluation and dissemination of curriculum development, the, curriculum support materials mm. that uh, that includes the digital learning resources mm. so the policy promotes utilization of ICT in curriculum development implementation mm. evaluation and assessment mm. Mm. then uh, in policy political visibility uh this approach, the, the ICT policy, it seeks to answer the questions, why do some policies seem to be more impactful mm. or known than mm. others? Why are the public administrators more receptive to some policies than others? That is based according, it is uh, according to Amide in 2008. Mm. Oyango, also did the same on uh, the impact mm -hmm. and uh, he also said uh, he talked about uh, having strategies mm -hmm. to involve to involve enhancing and exposure or increasing the prominence of public designs and contents to general populace so uh, according to me I think the ICT uh, policy meets all the five goals. Thank you. Very good. Um, I I am hoping that uh, the class is listening, and I just want to show you uh, uh, first of all this slide. I want to show you. Let me see whether I can get it very quickly. Uh, Badach Eightfold Path uh, Policy Analysis. Uh, is that a, yeah? Um, I want you to people to note this. Uh, just the other day, I told you we are now beginning to get into the swamp, and uh, basically, um. I want us to note this. The process of policy inquiry. And uh, 
colleagues, I call you colleagues because soon you'll get your PhDs and you'll be just like me. I, I want you to note that in a master's and PhD class, my teaching is uh, I cause disruption. Uh, so that you then go and assemble your thoughts and then you come back uh, and we we seek a unified way forward, both in research and uh, in policy studies. The process of policy inquiry is intended to discover solutions to practical problems. So when I'm marking your work, I don't, I don't care where you are sitting. I am going to see whether you are coming out to sort out a practical problem. And what does inquiry mean? Uh, inquiry, sorry, inquiry refers to probing, investigating, searching for solutions. That will not come if you are not doing adequate reading. Adequate reading. And that's what I'm expecting out of you. Adequate reading. And it does not refer to solutions that have been proved by means of pseudo-scientific modes of research that stress quantification as an ideal language, science or value-free, pure objectivity as an achievable goal. What I'm trying to say is that policy analysis don't regiment it into a science as such. Policy analysis also rests on art, craft, and persuasion. And policy analysis is a pragmatic enterprise exercise. So you will have to reason it out yourself and convince me. So me, I'm not looking for perfect answers. And policy analysis draws freely on many kinds of knowledge. That's what I would like to see. So can you absorb this for three minutes? Then I want to come back and uh, tell you what I expect in your paper. And one of you seems to be walking closer to what I expect. The I, I did mention that we are going to engage in uh, multidisciplinary policy analysis. In other words, if you are doing a policy in education, it doesn't stop with education. It will affect other sectors, water, agriculture, health, ETC. So these are the things I'll be looking for. And I gave you this PowerPoint. Um, and then policy relevant information, policy analysis addresses five questions. What is the nature of the problem for which a solution is sought? So the nature of the problem that's why we talked about problem identification. And 
what are the alternatives to solve the problem? What are the outcomes of choosing the cause of action? And do they contribute to solving the problem? And what future outcomes can be expected moving forward? In other words, you can't start on these assignments without going through the class text which we have given you, but also the PowerPoint presentations that I have given you. Look at a policy problem. It is an unrealized value or opportunity for improvement, which, however identified, may be attained through public action. So it is an opportunity for us to reform the education sector. It is an opportunity for us to increase the infrastructure. It is an, an opportunity for us to manage our politics better by funding political parties. Now, if it is a reform in education, it requires knowledge about a problem's antecedent conditions, like school dropout, as an antecedent for unemployment, as well, ab as, well as bringing information about values and so on and so forth. What am I saying? We are calling for intensive reading. And that's why, uh, hey, I want you to be sure you will get about four assignments from a hero, and that will be almost 75, between 65 and 75% of your evaluation. Information about policy problems plays a critical role in policy analysis because the way a problem is defined governs the search for appropriate solutions. What, what am I saying? The, the individual assignment, the one I, I've given you, is too heavy to be taken lightly. And I'd be expecting certain policy outcomes and the preferred policy from you. Now, in other words, I'm saying each one of you must go back to this presentation. Management of strategic policy in the various sectors. Here, I used education. And you have this. And you have to go through this thoroughly and align it to how you are answering your questions. The other thing I want to emphasize to all of you, which I'm not really seeing come out, we gave you this, <clears throat> this book, Badak's book. Uh, this book must be read thoroughly. And you are doing problem identification. Problem identification. Because this is the Bible for policy analysis. And we are starting with problem identification. So even before you start your assignment, you have to start with step one. Define the problem. And you have to read through this literature, all this literature, thoroughly and be able to define the problem. Then my second assignment, this one will not be marked. You are going to do it as an assignment to enhance your policy analysis knowledge, but we are not going to tell you step two will be an assignment. No, you will just read on your own. Then we'll come to step three in the parts that we have learned from Badak. Step three, we'll go through it, is construct the alternatives. This one will be an assignment, not for now, 
but this will be an assignment carrying marks. That's what we are going to do. So I hope you are taking these notes. So I would I would be very I'll be very reluctant to start looking at the assignment unless you are sure that you have thoroughly done the literature around defining the problem from your text, class text, from my PowerPoint uh, slides, which I've given you. I've given you two sets of PowerPoint slides, but also for, from your own extra reading, which I would like to see you do. Now, the other point is this. When I'll be marking your work, be sure the I gave you those areas where I'll expect you to be doing referencing. And the first area is the market or the environment. Some people call it the market and the police. So the, the market and where the policies, how the policies are needed in that environment. And I know that a theory of policy politics must start with a simple model of political society, just like economics starts with a simple model of economic society. So the, each problem you have must be within, an, within a political environment. And I would like to see that come through. Number two, the goals of policy development. Uh, the first pillar is equity. Equity. That's what we are looking for. There are too many homeless people in Kenya. There are too many slums. The education system is inefficient. There are many people dying because there are no drugs in hospitals. The rural uh, programs on uh, infrastructure are not working. The demand for agricultural water is growing. There are too many, I'm trying to say, we are trying to get equity. Can you, can you put this in your mind? Policy is actually running after equity. Then there is efficiency, a major pillar in policy analysis, efficiency. Uh, so we are not just, we, we are not just looking for equity, we are also looking for efficiency. By the way, equity, equity, I'll be looking for things like this. The most famous definition of political science says, is the study of who gets what, when, and how. So distributions, whether of goods and services, wealth and income, health and illness, opportunity and disadvantage are at the heart of policy controversies. Excuse me, Prof, are you sharing yes. some slides? No, I'm not sharing some slides. I'm just giving you, until I mark your work, I will not come in with slides here. Okay. So I'm just saying, keep in mind that when we talk about equity, keep in mind that in a distributive conflict, yeah, Northeastern has been neglected. Western province, the factories have collapsed. There is a distributive conflict. The farmers in central province they are, they are they are they have been held captive by the cartels in the coffee factor. So all sides seek equality. The conflict comes over how the sides envision a fair distribution of whatever is at stake. So equity is at the center of all this. Then efficiency, 
when I'm looking at your answer, I'll be looking at efficiency and giving a marks around efficiency. Now, efficiency, if you asked a hero, is a, a fancy name for a simple idea. Getting the most for the least. Very efficient. Getting the most for the least. Or achieving an objective for the lowest cost. But as the political scientist Aaron observed, efficiency doesn't tell you where to go. It doesn't tell you where to go. Only that you should arrive there with the least possible effort. But it doesn't tell you where to go. That's why we have problems with your CBC. It doesn't tell you where to go, but it is just telling you you should arrive there with the least possible effort and Kenyans will have acquired the skills that you have had people saying CBC will give us products who are self-reliant. It is lies. Efficiency is a way of judging the merit of doing or judging the merits of different ways of doing things. So I'll be looking at efficiency of your alternative. So efficient organizations are ones that get things done with a minimum of waste, duplication, and use of resources. So the laptop project in Kenya, supply of computers, uh, the Republic of Kenya put in close to 2 billion Kenya shillings. And the tablets are not anywhere. That is called wastage. Maybe we should have employed more teachers. So we shall be, I'll be searching for efficiency in what you are, in, in giving me your paper. And by the way, I hope this, this is a detailed work. It's not shallow, simple sentences that we have left at the undergraduate level. We have climbed to another level. Welfare. Welfare. Another pillar. Government is a contrivance of human wisdom to provide for human wants. That's why we have a government. And we are talking of human wants, not, and I don't mean desires and wishes. I'm talking about the older sense of lacks or needs. I don't know whether you have heard of this saying that for want of a nail, the kingdom was lost. So we, 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 we are looking for a political argument about what it means for government to promote human welfare. And at the level of political rhetoric, governments promise to promote welfare in the more subjective sense, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But when designing programs on the ground, policymakers typically seek objective standards of need to define the scope of public responsibility for social welfare. So Mimi Nataka Kuona Maisha Ya Wanainchi Yakibadilika. And by the way, we are not just doing policy analysis. We are simply asking you to address the many dilemmas we face as a country at your level so that these values and the expertise on policy analysis are inculcated in you and in whichever space you are sitting, whether in a school, whether in a university, whether in a hospital, you can show that difference. And you know that defining need for purposes of public programs 
becomes a political contest. Uh, you have had pronouncements like uh, Serikali is shares. It becomes a political contest. Groups of citizens try to portray their desires as objective, essential, and impossible to reject. Sasa munataka nini? Amu kura, so you are not part of this company. So policymakers seek to portray their program criteria as objective, so as to put the programs beyond political dispute. So policymakers, policy analysis actually tries to counter the blind ambitions of politicians. And I think for me, the simplest, most common, and in some ways intuitively most appealing definition of need is what is necessary for sheer physical survival. For physical survival. So uh, I think the people of Kibera need sanitation for heaven's sake. So that is up to members of parliament, MCS, and the government. And I don't know how to say it. Having five toilets in your house isn't about development. When, when a mile away, people are using flying toilets. So eating chicken and chapatis and sausages and hot dogs on Christmas Day isn't about nutrition. Me, I think on Christmas Day is about connection to a nation through tradition. So everybody, even the poorest, tries to slaughter chicken in their home on Christmas Day. Anyway, I can go on and on. I, I become very passionate. I want to see welfare coming out very strongly in your papers. And uh, there is security. We talked about security as a major pillar. I would like to see how it is articulated. Uh, the class seems to have gone dead. Uh, the lawyers would ask, "Are you? Is this? Are these matters? We are finding, listening. Are they finding you, <laughs> Prof? We are. We are. are, 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 are they we are listening. You? We are just <laughs> wondering whether you withdraw our papers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I will allow that because I want you to get the marks that will make you strong." I really don't want to, to, out of 30 marks, people are getting less than five out of 30. It will be disaster. And that is where I wanted to, to reach uh, defining the problem. And then step two, assemble some evidence is your next reading area and making your summary notes. You have to make these notes because eventually we are going to write policy briefs for the government, for your department, for your school. So you have, even where I say the work will not be handed in, you must read the work. So we have two things to do. Assemble some evidence. And this one, uh, Caro, can you label it as a group exercise, five of them in a group? But this will not be submitted. <clears throat> but they need it. Right. And so, then um, I want sorry, them to re just hold on. I want them to relook at assignment one, defining the problem, and also the the work they were given to do. 
uh, let's give them another one week so that I can I can get reasonable work that I can come back and say yes that was fantastic and so and so's paper was the best uh, that's what I want to see and then uh, after that next week uh, after we assemble the evidence and we are convinced we now go to, to construct the alternatives which is very very important providing solutions to the problem Gaki, I see your hand is up. Uh, just a concern, Prof, on my end. I don't know whether my classmates have the same feeling or, that I share. Yes. Um, it's quite a gray area that we are trying to navigate through. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, with the work that we did, could you just skim through, uh, then give us a report so that we can know or we can know what we are working with because st it still seems, as you call it, it's a swampy area, I agree, mm -hmm. and we seem stuck, or I do seem stuck. So could you please skim through our work and then tell us how you felt about the assignment, whether there's something promising, promising about it so that we can now redo it from a point of um, understanding, yeah. Yeah, no problem, Gaki, and, and I have no problem, but you know, the mark I give you will now stand. If we agree, uh -huh. if we agree, then I have no problem. No, mine I was a review, a review of just knowing, not marking passes, skimming through to see whether did we have the ideas or not, did we get the assignment or not, just skimming through, not okay. necessarily okay. marking. Yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I'll do that. I think that's Thank fair. you so much. Okay. All right. All right. Um, nataka ni muache katika hiyo hali ya utatanishi. <laughs> Alafu <laughs> uh, nimeombwa nikague hiyo kazi uh, kwa ufupi. Alafu ni wape fikra zangu and ndio muanze kufanya hiyo kusaidisha alafu tuone vile mtaonyesha ujasiri kuliko wakati huu asante yeah. prof naomba prof yeah. naomba mimi naomba kurudia tu professor naomba kidogo eh yeah urejelee ile pointi ulikuwa umesema kwamba we assemble the evidence on step 3 which mm. will be an a group work step 2 that is group work yeah step 3 yeah, and it is not for submission yes so what we were what were we supposed to do assemble the evidence read the yeah. document yeah. you read the you just read your your from your book Yes. You read from your class book. Uh, you you also look for articles. By the way, the library has so many articles and other books. So maybe if you are meeting in a group of five, one will read our class book. The other one will look for articles. The other one will look for another text. And then we bring the diverse views there. The different approaches the books have, the journal articles have. That's how you become a true master student. So that, well, that's understand. what happened. But uh, Wekesa, you don't jump this. Eh? You cannot jump this because it will come to tell when you are doing your policy briefs. It will assume you have done how to assemble evidence. Yes, yes, Prof. Yes, and you know this online course, by the way, is I'm just we are just being, we are babying you because you are our first class. But we are not supposed to be teaching the way we are teaching. We're supposed to be giving you assignments, marking, discussing, and moving. But I didn't want that. I really want us to, to make you strong. That's why we are going through uh, many hours of teaching. <clears throat> Thanks, Prof. Uh, Carol, Carol can, I, can I sign off? Have I done a reasonable um, Yes, I think they have a lot to meet up and uh, discuss as they move on. I think today, for today, Prof, you've done a very reasonable job, and I think that is good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but there, bye -bye, are some, there was a hand, if you can respond to oh. just one. Jenny? Amisi, yes, Amisi. 
Yeah, I I am still back on the on the group formations. Mm. You are saying there is a part we are doing in groups of is it five? Yeah. And if we check in the portal, we've actually not met as a group. I am a member of group A, and we don't know each other. So are we still going to have another group, or are we going to remain in that group A? I think that that's Kara will deal with those logistics. Okay. Uh, but let, let's call this your first group assignment, this one. Yeah. Of assembled so, evidence, yeah. I will, dis uh, I will just uh, now dismantle all the other groups and officially form the groups of five five. Yeah. Now that the class is full and there's no one joining after this. Yeah, that is true. Fine, fine. And don't let them, don't let friends come together. Carol. Juliet, Otiano. Prof, it's very ran it's random. It doesn't even yeah. choose. Otiano, Juliet, are you okay? Okay, I think that is what I wanted to find out, which group we are talking about. Because currently we we have groups that we did another assignment with, and I think they are groups of five. That, so, that is in research methods, isn't it? Research methods. Yeah, that was research. The one we were with you, Mku. Yeah. Okay, sour, sour. Okay. Bye-bye, good night, and uh, I keep on good enjoying night, teaching. These classes. God bless. Bye bye. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. No, no. <laughs> all right. Mina, some people already well, left us. So, guys, I will dismantle all the groups for research, not for research, for this particular class, and we begin all of it. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, fine. That's fine. Good night. I've got something to declare. Yes, you say? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking. Yeah. Now that prof is like we redo the assignment, what happens for us of submitted? Will you pull it down again? Give us a week. I have no problem. I can revert all assignments in, in the drafts. Anyone who wants to do anything, it's up to you. Then I close no. it. I close no, it no, next no. week. That's okay. No. no, prof has promised to review the assignments and give his feedback so that we can move from there. So if but he also gave down. he also gave a leeway. No, he also gave yeah. a leeway. He gave yes. a leeway for those who'd like to review. It's fine. Yes. It's so okay. Yes. The portals again. The leeway so, was um, before. If I will ask those who'd like me to review their work in drafts, you put your name. Then I'll, I'll, I'll put those who don't want, that's okay. Doctor, it's okay. I'm ready. Doctor, doctor why can't you make, make it a new assignment? For everyone. No, I can't make a new assignment. I will ask who would like me to review your assignment into draft. To review to yourself so that no one says I put their work in draft and they didn't want. Excuse me, Dr. Is uh is okay after re reverting the work, will Professor be able to view my work? No, you until you once I, I put it in draft, just means you want to review, until you submit again. So uh I think for me to do it would have been a good idea you just review your work and resubmit other than mm -hmm. waiting yes. for prof to doctor that's that's okay that's okay, that's okay. Doctor. 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 and those who are not submitting talk, you know i'm doing this on youtube live so i'll stop recording so that we can move on but thank you for coming for this class the only thing i want to do is stop recording and then if there's okay. any other question you can but it has been a very nice um engagement with prof and i hope we are getting somewhere with policies Next study. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, as earlier suggested by Gaki, if I'm not wrong, mm 